Hey guys, today I want to show you how to recover a bed that has gotten kind of crusty. So we've got really clay soil here on the farm. And if you followed my vlogs for a while and you've seen me do stuff on the farm over the years, you've seen me talk about this many times. And um, But here we've got sort of a, a rare circumstance in that we haven't been using our greenhouse to its full capacity this summer, primarily because we're not doing tomatoes. And um, you know, we've got, <laughs> I got one row of tomatoes, but that's just kind of like for us and for canning and stuff like that. We're not selling it. I've got some, a um, couple beds of carrots there, but I've got one, two, three, and four beds are empty. I got some basil here. So what's happening here is the soil is super crusty. What, we, what should have happened is we should have kept these beds covered with a landscape fabric for a period of time. And then that would have kept the, the soil from getting too crusty because it wouldn't be drying out. But sometimes shit happens, right? Like these are just rare circumstances. And what we've got is this really crusty soil, like stuff like this on the top. So I don't want to rototill this, right? Because that'll just make it worse. Um, so what I am going to do is try to recover it as best I can. And so I'm under the clock here because I want to get a bed of carrots in here for overwintered carrots for the winter. And uh, I don't have a lot of time. So if I had time right now and time wasn't an issue, what I would do is I would water this bed really heavily and then cover it with something and then water it again and cover it with something. What you could do is just lay down a perforated landscape fabric like the stuff that we use on the farm and just keep it wet and covered and that stuff will actually let water go through. So you could just keep watering it and watering it with the landscape fabric on top and that would keep, that would really soften up the soil. But I don't have that, I don't have time. So what I'm gonna do today here is I'm going to broad fork this bed, or I'm going to use uh, the Roebuck fork actually, and then I'm going to water it and I'm going to let it sit for a little while. So I'm going to use time in the short term. I'm going to keep watering it throughout the day and then I'm going to turn it over a little bit later on and I'm going to, uh, in no particular order, whether I fork it or water it down doesn't matter too much. I think I'll probably fork it before I get it wet. That way I won't be dealing with mud. So I'll fork it, then I'll water it, then I'll let it sit for a while. I'll come back and water it later in the day. And then I'll run the tilther in here to break up the top crust. Then I'll put a fresh layer of compost. Then I'm gonna plant directly into that. I'm not even gonna run the tilther with the compost. I'm gonna keep that compost on top. If you've seen me Talk, talk about carrots, like last season I kind of had an epiphany with carrots and we've had amazing carrot yields as a result is I direct seed my carrots directly into the compost on top. I get the best germination that way. So that's essentially what I'm gonna do. I'm using this, uh, that's the big blue gun. I like this tool for things like this because it can shoot so far. Like this greenhouse is 50 feet long. I'm, I'm basically shooting this about 45 feet. So uh, I don't really have to walk around. I can just stand here and water it down. And if you've got a, a dram on an off valve on there too, you can kind of taper back the pressure so that you can bring your, uh, you can bring it back closer to you. So I kind of jumped the gun on watering it there. So I'll, that's, but that's fine. I'll let this sit for an hour or two. I'll come back later in the day and then I'll fork it. And then I might water it again. Uh, and let it sit and then run the tilter. So we'll see, it all just depends on how the water settles on this soil, but I'll leave this for a little while. Okay, so it's been about an hour and I'm just getting it again. Okay, so I started this process in the morning. Uh, it wasn't early, it was maybe 9 30 or 10 and i've watered this about three times and i think it's as good as i'm going to get it at this point so i've just put done a string line on here just so when i uh i want to preserve the um this placement of these beds and this can, they can kind of get moved around especially when you're going to fork them this tool more or less does what a broad fork does it's just a little bit more nimble which i prefer especially in the uh, in the greenhouse
so that was a 30 inch implement for that BCS. These beds are actually 24 inches in this greenhouse. I had to do it that way to make eight beds. I wanted to have eight beds so it was even and then there was a, a, a center walkway. Um, so anyways, this is done the best as I can. What I did is I raked and if there was any big chunks of kind of hardened soil along the top, I just got, just got them out and I kept everything down below. I don't want to disturb the soil that much because once I put my layer of compost on here and then, the, and then I plant and the crop goes in and it's getting watered all the time, that soil is going to soften back up. So I'm kind of just letting nature do the work in the way. Let the soil biology take care of the rest. So it's been aerated with a, with a broad fork or roebuck fork and uh, we've run a, uh, we've, we've done a shallow cultivation about an inch deep on the top and now we're going to put the compost and then we're going to plant and then we're, we're done. When I'm raking this compost in, I'm not. I'm being very careful to not mix it in. I'm just keeping it on the surface, and that's what I want because I'm going to get a really good germination that way. And then I keep all that good organic matter on the top of the soil. All right, so that's just about done. Well, it is done, but now I'm going to plant my carrots directly into this compost. Now, because um, this bed is a little bit narrower than my normal beds. It's 24 inches opposed to 30. I'm gonna plant five rows of carrots instead of seven because I normally plant seven on a 30 inch bed. So in this case, I have six inches less, so I'll drop two rows and make it five. All right, well, that's it. Got my carrots planted. All I'll do now is I'll uh, hand water this bed and put my drip irrigation back, and then I'm pretty much good to go. If you guys have any questions about any of the equipment I was using in this video, follow the link that's right in the show notes. It'll take you to my website where I have sort of an encyclopedia of all the gear I, ha I use on the farm. And so you can kind of navigate it through there. And uh, yeah, that's it. Hope you guys found that helpful. Hit the subscribe button and the notification button next to it if you want to be notified of my videos. And sh like and share them with your friends. And I'll talk to you later. Take care. Mm -hmm.